Hey, uh, Damon? It was me. Hey, yeah, I, I could tell. Ah, yeah, this is a cool prank. Sorry, sorry I tricked you. Uh, oh, how are you doing? I'm, how are you doing? Does that even count as a prank? Okay, uh, how are you? What, are you? what are you up to? What are you doing? I have started a new business. Cool, what's the, what's the business? Well, you know how a lot of people are uh, kind of stuck at home away from their loved ones, significant others, things like that. And I realize yeah. that there's a lot of women out there who unfortunately couldn't be with their lover or boyfriend. Okay. So what I've been doing is I've started a service where I wear t-shirts. I kind of really get into them and I get my musk into them. And then I, I mail them out to these women so they can like feel like there's a manly presence in their home or when they're asleep at night so they're, they're not so they're not so alone you're selling uh, used t-shirts yeah i got the idea from those vending machines in japanese subways i feel like i feel like there's a de very different purpose for those compared to yours yours feels like it's an emotional strength that you're providing i don't know if that was necessarily the case with the japanese ones it's it's not gone well Oh, okay. oh, oh, sorry, I thought this was like a pitch where you were just going to be like, and it's, I'm very excited for it, but there's more. There's more to this no, business plan, I've been yeah? No, yeah, I've been, I've been doing it for a while, and uh, it turns out that women ordering it thought boyfriend t-shirts were t-shirts for that you get for your boyfriend. And okay. a lot of them have, apparently it's caused difficulties in the relationships when, say, the boyfriend opens the package and there's a used t-shirt from... A man saying this is to keep you warm at night. So, uh, if you've been several things. Firstly, can we not can we say worn T-shirt rather than used T-shirt? It's mm. very upsetting the phrase used mm. T-shirt. And uh, secondly, I I understand why these men are upset. A T-shirt reeking of musk in a box. Now, not Elon Musk. Me. I just want to be clear in case anybody thinks I've got a, a pipeline to that genius. Cool. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay. I ordered a thousand of them, so I really have to get the stock moving. So if anybody wants to order one, Great. Uh, just so let now, me know. Now we understand why we have a Patreon that we need to set up. <laughs> why we need a coffee page because yeah. Damon has bought a lot of t-shirts. I've been actually, I did sell quite a few to Japan. So that's, that's been a good, that's been the highlight of the Perfect. whole thing. Wonderful, wonderful. So there's a lot of Japanese businessmen right now that are wearing used underwear and are awaiting your worn t-shirts. That's perfect. That's going to be a, a, an image I'm never going to get out of my head. Thank you very much, Damon, for, for the start it's, of the second episode. What do we have in store today? We have a very special guest, a uh, famous actor from Game of Thrones, uh, also uh, known to people from being in our sketches on many occasions and also known for being in the Try videos on YouTube. Very funny guy. It's a Mr. A Dermot Ward, everybody. So in today's episode, we, Dermot is a, he's a movie file. He's a film lover. So Excuse we me? said, <laughs> said, why don't you come in and review movies for us? That might be a fun thing. You can uh, help people find new things for them to check out or watch. Absolutely. And when you look at the show and the kind of, uh, the way this show works, we want people to pick like a general thing that they can kind of advise people to do. So movies were quite generous. So we're like, is there a particular genre of movie or something, Dermot? He kind of knew the rules of the show. And, and what did he go for, Damon? He went for Damon Lindelof. Damon Lindelof. He went for one writer, producer, <laughs> not even a director. He went for one guy who worked on Lost, who's done a bunch of shows that Dermot knows we don't like, and we know Dermot does like, and we go- Loves them. We go out of our way to attack his love for it all the time. So if we come off at all bullish in this, I want you to know that Dermot planned this and orchestrated this because he knows exactly what to do. He, he knows exactly what he's done here. This has been an ongoing thing with Dermot for, I'd say about eight years mm -hmm. now with mm -hmm. him. He knew what he was getting in for and uh, We'll, we'll talk about it later anyway. But, Absolutely. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting episode. Uh, I don't know how many of you at the end are going to be like, I'm really interested in checking out Damon Lindelof. So of course Dermot would come and break the format in episode two. But going forward, we'll have more general things. It will be fun. But for this episode, we thought, ah, it's Dermot. Let's just let him do whatever the old man wants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to check it out. Is there anything else you want to say before we get into the interview, Damon? No, the, let's go straight into it. This is Dermot Ward reviewing Damon Lindelof movies 
for episode two of The Catch Up. Pull on your used panties, put on your worn t-shirts, let's do this. Hey, hey Dermot. Dermot! Hey guys, thanks for having me on the on the show. Very, very welcome Dermot. Thanks for coming along to, to our show today and for being our guest. Uh, so we've been catching up with people, finding out what they've been doing with all this this personal time they have to themselves. So what would you like to tell us about today, Dermot? Uh, have you heard of this thing called movies? Hmm. Oh, the, the flickies. The flickies? Yeah, that's, I feel like that's a, a sexual move and we shouldn't talk about that. But uh, oh. that sounds very interesting, Dermot. Uh, everyone else has come with very specific things that people can do and you've just given us a, a, a genre thing of human existence. So you, uh, I'm looking forward to next week's one when you come back and, and explain to us reading. Have you heard of it? Uh, Dermot has not heard of reading. I don't know why that would even that's, be a suggestion. No, it has to be read to Dermot, so he has heard the reading. They're all it's audiobooks. Per- it's pronounced reading. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, Dermot. So, Dermot, uh, what is the, the thing you would like, this type of movie, I guess, or the specific movie you'd like to talk to about today? I saw a movie this week called The Hunt. Is this an adult movie, Dermot? That seems uh, seems inappropriate for the rating we're going for today. We Dermot. invite you here with all of our support. This is how you speak to us, Dermot? Very rude. Very, very rude. Yeah, I, I also regret the decision. Um, no, it it was uh, it, it's it's a it's a it's a movie that uh, that uh, uh, was released in cinemas, uh, and then a week later, the world ended. So uh, it's now on because of this movie. Mm, yes. Correlation and effect. I get it. All right, can you tell us about this movie, The Hunt? The Hunt involves twelve strangers mysteriously awakening in an unknown location and being hunted for sport, much like the classic Richard Connell short story, The Most Dangerous Game. Or John Leguizamo's The Pest. So, Dermot, we know the movie is written by Damon Lindelof, so besides being hot garbage, what else can you tell us about it? Uh, okay, that's, that's unfair. Damon Lindelof is, a, is an incredible writer. Uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, screenwriters of, of our time. The movie is, is, is an interesting look at, uh, at um, um, biases and how they can affect our perspective on the other side's viewpoint. Also, there's there's like there's like loads of blood and guts and gore. So finally, a movie that takes the brave stance of saying Trump was right all along. Why do you keep trying to make us watch these movies, Dermot? If they're not in the cinema, they're just videos that you've edited yourself and sent to us online. Dermot, that movie does sound uh, terrible. We agree. What did you think about it? Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't think it was terrible. Um, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's it's got an interesting premise that uh, uh, doesn't. Doesn't always nail the landing, but but uh, it's uh, it's it's quite successful in, in 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 what it's trying to do. I think. Well, I've seen the movie, and I emphatically disagree with you. I thought it was ham-fisted. I thought the performances were terrible. I thought it really took a a, a two sides are as bad as each other approach, uh, much like someone telling you the jokes that had happened on South Park the night before. Uh, what do you think it was trying to say? Well, I, I, I think it was trying to say that uh, depending on your biases, uh, you can see the same picture as someone else, but see a completely different thing than the other person. Like a magic eye painting? <sighs> Is it like that one scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but they made a whole movie out of it? Where you're standing close to the picture, but then you're farther away? <laughs> I feel like so the idea of this podcast is that people can like get away from all the stress and I'm glad you're here for today's episode where we take all of that stress that you have and put it right on Dermot you, you came into the movie with uh, some sort of grudge so that has coloured your view of the film whereas I went into it thinking he is the uh, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ so and... you're coming into it clean like you've never had I don't know for example any personal experience with Damon Lindelof where he's spoken to you directly right Dermot? As a matter of fact, I, I, he has spoken to me directly. Oh, what? When did it, what? What? Yeah. When, I genuinely don't know this. When has he spoken to you? On the red carpet for Star Trek Into Darkness. Let's not talk about that. Uh, but on the okay. red carpet for that movie. Did he write that as well? Was he involved in that yeah, at, yeah, all, at yeah, all? Yeah, he co-wrote that. Oh, okay, interesting. Let's cut to that clip of Dermot being talked to by Damon Lindelof. Dermot, don't tell me what I can't do. Oh, wow, Dermot, now it makes sense why you like his garbage. Well, Dermot, I think we can all be in agreement after hearing that, that we're still on the hunt for a good movie by Damon Lindelof. But thank you very much for coming in today and uh, talking to us about it. So tell us, what else are you doing at the moment? What else do you have going on? He's a long-form storyteller, okay? Anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, well, you can see me on the Troy channel. On, on Never heard of it. Never heard of it. It's, it's good. You should check it out. Some people on it are kind of annoying. but um... Did Lindelof write their characters? <laughs> 
Hmm. Hashtag not hmm. all demons. It's <laughs> fair. Yeah. And uh, I'm also on the Twitters and the Instagrams and stuff at, at Chisman. You're going to put that up here, right? That's going to sure. appear beneath me somehow, right? It is beneath you, but yes, we will absolutely uh, include that in the video. Uh, well, thanks, thanks, Dermot, for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have you again reviewing movies uh, soon. Or not? I mean, you don't, you don't have to. It's fine. No, definitely, contract. Dermot. It's been the best episode so far. Thanks for being here. I, 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 I appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me on. Catch up with you next time. See you, buddy. I hate you both. Oh my God, what an amazing interview that was. I've never been so into something before. That guy turned me right around and then turned me right around again until I did a full 360 and I was back where I started. I might as well have not even bothered, but I'm so glad Dermot was on. What do you think, Damon? I think we have Roger Ebert's illegitimate son in the building, giving us his 24 frames per second review of the good stuff. Uh, it was great to have him there. Mm -hmm. He obviously was having the best time oh, talking about it. Oh, 100%. I feel like, in, in many ways, we were bullied by him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, just say, just say no to people like Dermot is our advice. Exactly. Imagine uh, you tell someone you don't like a type of food and he comes over to your house and makes you watch him eat it. That's what Dermot did here for this episode. So you, everyone should be annoyed with Dermot for this episode, I feel. We do want to also say genuinely, we were like, at the end, we were like, uh, are you happy with this? Is this cool? And he goes, yeah, having the best time. You but uh, you never know. <laughs> you never know with Dermot. So I'm just going to give him a quick, I'm just going to give him a quick call to just double check. Absolutely. Um, give Dermot a quick call. Let's check in. I'm just going to sit here uh, motionless for a moment to think about it. Okay. It's ringing. Uh, hey, Dermot. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Hey, it's, da it's Damon and George here. We're just, we're just recording um, the outro to our interview. Oh, great. You, you'll, have to, you'll have to speak up. I'm naked and holding an eel. I just want to double check. Just again, you were totally okay with that interview and very happy to be involved, right? Oh, I, I quite, I, honestly, like I've got nothing else uh, going on in my life, you know? I just wish more people would send me uh, messages about peanut butter. Uh, yeah, you know? Sir? You're breaking up there a little bit. What what do you want to hear messages about? Uh, my messages about you know, peanut 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 butter and uh, you know I'm just I'm just so cold out here after the after I recorded with you guys uh, uh, an angry ram stole all my clothes. If only I could have some sort of underwear or or, or a worn T-shirt from a vending machine. Uh, it just seems like a great idea for a product for me, but but people aren't thinking of the future. Uh, I, I well, that's a strange thing to say, Dermot, but uh, best of luck finding a solution to that very specific problem. Okay, see you later. Love you. Bye-bye. Whoa, 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 whoa. Goodbye, goodbye, bye, 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 bye. So. Oh, that was, uh, that was crazy. I didn't even get crazy. to say anything to him. That was rude. Yeah, he very, he's not great on the phone. I you, have to you be honest You literally said at the start that I was here. You said, oh, it's, it's Jordan. Like, that guy is so rude. What a, so what rude. A, why is he holding an eel? I don't know, man. Just know. odd. Odd guy. I might have to cut this out like very weird like I don't know if we can include this I don't I don't think people realize how weird Dermot is <laughs> hopefully they'll hopefully they'll never know hopefully uh, so uh, thanks for watching episode two of the catch-up hope you've uh, got a recommendation if you want to uh, find out anything else in the future that we can to assign to one of our friends please let us know hey stay stay safe stay healthy stay indoors and stay remembering that Dermot is a freaking weirdo Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please feel free. We're going to be having sketches coming out soon as well. So if you want to hear about them, uh, get in there early. Uh, anything you want to say, George? Uh, just if there's anyone out there you know who you think would like these videos or who's watched the Try channel or watched our sketches before or even someone who you just think likes our sense of humor or would like it, send the video on to them. Maybe they'll like it. And if they don't, they'll go, don't ever send me a link again. And then you know the boundaries you have with that person. But uh, thanks for checking it out. We'll catch you next time here on The Catch-Up.